Gérald Janta uh, was born in 1931 and he died in 2011. Um, he came from a very poor family. His father was Italian and his mother was uh, Swiss. Um, and he started as a designer just on his own. He was starting to, to draw on his own. He wanted to be a car designer, but uh, unfortunately, because he lived in Switzerland, he decided to be a watch designer, just because Geneva is the berceau de l'horlogerie, how we call it. Um, so that's how he started his career as a designer in watches, but also jewelry. Uh, he did a lot of other design for uh, very famous brands. But mostly, his most iconic watch was uh, the Royal Oak for Audemars uh, Piguet. And the final is he did the sample of the car or he didn't do it? No, he never, it never came through. No, unfortunately. He was also a painter. So he was also, a, yes, he did a lot of paintings. He never uh, got really famous for his painting, but mostly for his sketches for watches, but he really loved to paint. If you look at it on Google, you can see his style is a little bit like Chagall. So very colorful, very uh, childish design, very nice, very different from the watch sketches that are very um, symmetric. So here are a couple of Gérald Janta's drawing, original drawing. Uh, Gérald Janta was one of the most important designer of watches in the industry. So here you can see a drawing that was made for Hermès. It's original. It's the original drawing, exactly. And what materials do you use it on the paper? Yes, so this one is uh, gouache on paper. Most of them are gouache on paper. Uh, some of them are collage. Um, he also did some jewelry pieces, such as this necklace. We don't know whom it was commissioned for, so it could be Piaget, Patek Philippe. This is a beautiful table clock with a mechanism of a perpetual calendar. So it means that it recognizes the month of 30 and 31 and the leap year. So it will go from the 28th to the 1st. And it was actually, so it was painted in blue, but it ended up uh, being green. And it was for the Middle East markets. And green is the color. And Pastor Veria lies in, uh, in metal, this gold. Uh, that's so this this uh, was enamel, mm -hmm. so it's all enameled. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the most stunning timepieces he made. Um, this is quite special. Also, it was commissioned for someone. So it's a unique piece. Um, as you can see, there's a little timepiece inside the horse, the drawing of the horse. Um, in French, we say it's uh, épée can, sword cane. This is a pocket watch, so it's a perpetual calendar, uh, pretty typical of his design. Um, this is the moon face here in lapis lazuli. This also is very special. It has, you can see the perpetual calendar here. But this is for what? It's like for credit cards? Exactly, yeah. Business cards, credit cards, and the format of a letter. Very cute idea. This is part of his brand. So it's pretty typical, the red uh, color. And then these are the 
erotic pieces that he made also. I think in the 80s, 90s, it was pretty typical of the watchmaking industry to have this kind of scenes. So it was a minute repeater, so it really had a mechanism. <laughs> okay, so these were also part of the erotic scenes, and it was pencils. And then this is a famous drawing called Les Amoureux that was made, we don't know for whom, but for someone famous, French governor or something. These are made in the late 80s, also very typical of his design with uh, colored stones such as sapphire, rubies, emeralds, diamonds. He worked for the watch company. Yes, exactly. So I'll show you afterwards. I think it's, so this one never saw the light. I mean, it was just a, a, a sample that he made for Van Cleef, but apparently they never realized, realized it, exactly. This also was a unique piece, special commission. And then I can show you, I think from all his drawings, one of the most important one, the iconic uh, Royal Oak from uh, Audemar Piguet. So this one is really, I think, with the Nautilus for Patek Philippe, the most important drawing he made. Um, that got him pretty famous, I would say. So this one was commissioned in 1972. But before that, this was the esquisse of the final drawing. So it was a little bit different. It had six screws instead of eight screws. That was the final octagonal shape. Before that, it was an hexagon shape. So it's interesting to see the evolution of this piece. So yeah. these are the two most important. So you, you can see that in the auction, the um, online auction, this one is now at 50,000 Swiss francs. Mm -hmm. And this one is around 25,000. So I think these are, yes, oh, the drawings. Sorry. Yeah, the drawings. Mm -hmm. um, this was for Audemars Piguet also. It was a drawing made for Audemars Piguet. Um, this one was made for Piaget, uh, a very nice uh, two-time zone, so it gives you two time. So if you were traveling, you could have your home time and then, traveling. yeah, exactly. Um, and then this is the famous uh, Pasha for Car Cartier. And this one is a skeletonized uh, movement as well as a perpetual calendar. So very complicated watch. Um, but I don't think they made this, so. He designed also the bracelet? Exactly. So this is even more complicated movement. It has a minutes repeater, so it means that it rings the time. So it would ring the hours, the quarters, and the minutes. And then it has the perpetual calendar and a uh, wall time. So you can have the 24 hour time zone. This was also made for uh, Cartier, but it never see <laughs> the light. It wasn't uh, executed. So interesting to see that he made a lot of sketches, but not all were actually executed. But he could propose on different uh, watch companies. So. Exactly, definitely. At the time, you know, you would sell your sketch for 100 uh, Swiss francs, 200 Swiss francs mm -hmm. to the brands. And you didn't have like an exclusivity with one brand. You could just, uh, you know, try to sell them to any brand that would agreed to take them. So. And what age he did it? So, um, 
Well, I mean, these are from the 80s, starts from the 60s to the 80s, so I guess he was around like 50s, in his 50s to 60s, yeah. Um, and yes, this one was uh, commissioned, so it's a unique piece. It's made out of uh, pink diamonds and white diamonds. Yeah, it is beautiful. Huh? This is part of his brand, so later era, um, with uh, what we call uh, retrograde uh, minutes and hours at six. So these are complicated, pretty complicated movements. Uh, and this is also a very popular um, creation of his, is he uh, did a lot of uh, Disney characters on his watches, which would uh, display hours and minutes. Like and so that, far. yes, exactly, because it's it's actually from collage, so you could say that it's a uh, pop out. Uh, it's a sticker. You can see that it's a little bit broken here. But at the time, it didn't have uh, a lot of success in the watchmaking industry, which is very traditional. Yeah, uh, be very, uh, exactly. <laughs> and this one is also a famous one for Universal. He made, I think he started to um, get famous with this one. So yeah, Gérald Janta is really a pioneer in terms of designer of watchmaking, but he also did a lot of other design for he, he, he was designing cutleries, he was designing very different uh, things. So apparently he was drawing all day. He would wake up, go at the office at eight o'clock in the morning in his suit and he was just drawing all day. So there's more than 3,200 drawings in total, but we selected uh, 100 for each of our cell. We have 30 in each of our cell. Did he have different jobs as well or it was his main uh, job? It was his main job. Okay. It was definitely his main job, yeah. He worked for himself or for companies? Well, at the beginning he worked for companies and then he had his own brand. So at the end he had his own brand, his own watches, his own company. He was, you know, producing his watches. So, but at the very first he was designing for any brand that wanted to buy his sketches. And all that drawing that will be like uh, on the auction, uh, celebrity auction? Exactly. So in our um, online auction in Geneva from and the... And when it will be? So it's uh, now uh, and it's from the 10th to the 24th. Okay. Yes. And so behind are the NFTs. So as you can see in those screens, so there are uh, digital reproduction of the drawings. And so when you buy the drawing, you also buy the NFT. Oh, you can put it at home also and... Um, exactly. On the screen. Yes. Um, and the extract of archive come as a, a NFT as well. Mm -hmm. Welcome, thank you.